Sink this, motherfucker. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. I'm Andrew. You don't wave. It's a podcast. There's audio listeners. They can't see you waving. But you were, why are we recording the video then? Because we're also on YouTube. So I wave to the YouTube people. Hi, YouTube people. Hello. For listeners, we just waved. So, last episode we talked about preparing for NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. Yeah. Where you are set out, well, you set out with the goal to write a work of 50,000 words? 50,000 or more. How many is it? What is that in pages? 250. Hmm. It doesn't sound like a lot of 200 pages. 200 maybe, 250. It's, it's a lot of pages. Well, if you're going <laughs> to break it up evenly, what is it? So 50,000 words over 30 days is what? 1,667 words per day. A little bit more than the 350 that I was banking on before I figured out what the math was. <laughs> math runs everything. Ah, That's not true. I can usually pull 750 words in half an hour by the end of the month. That's my rate. Nice. Yeah. So that you hit yours in like th- or an hour and a half? Yeah, of writing time, not necessarily yeah. continuous yeah. clock time. Mm-hmm. All right. But, uh, yeah, we want to talk about surviving and taking care of yourself and how to stay focused and things like that. But first, icebreaker. What is the novel you could never write? Last episode, we talked about the novel you desperately want to write. Andrew. I could never write an epic fantasy. I knew you were going to say that. You knew, like, because you know me. You know me well, Jim. You've known me for years. Imagine now. a book about murderers, Andrew. Only the murderers are dragons. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I will never write. They grip a pistol in their forelimbs. An epic fantasy. Uh, we we spoke off off audio and off camera earlier about my love for really short chapters, mm-hmm. and I like to just string a bunch of those together and make it an, an easy to read, not too long book. If you want me to write 200,000 words of anything, that that's not going to happen. Not in a continuous story. And if you want it to be fantasy, that's also not going to happen. I need my I need I have current one. known laws of physics. I have one word to for behave. You, <laughs> Butter saga. Butter saga. Butter There's saga. already Batesian physics. We'll get into that another another episode. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, so I could never write the epic the epic fantasy. The fantasy is not a genre that I'm drawn to. It's mm-hmm. not a genre that my brain lives in. Um, and anything epic to me is just I don't have the attention span for it. To be honest with you, I'll be completely honest. If I don't have the attention span to consume it, I definitely don't have the attention span to create it. The Butter Saga, <laughs> an abbreviated epic. Yes, that's kind of like, that's very um, Adams-like with the trilogy in four parts. What about you, Ryan? Uh, this is going to feel like a bit of a cop-out. Um, I, Epic fantasy? Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm, it's not going to go that much of a cop-out. Um, no, I, I had a hard time thinking about this because like there's, there's things that I can't write about like things that I don't have experience in that I could not really ever have experience in without ripping yeah. somebody else off but that's that seems like even yeah like more voice of a appropriation cop. stuff and yeah stuff. so I mean like I mean I could write it but I shouldn't write it and yeah. I probably could not write it well so mm-hmm. it, it combine all those together um so in this case like I tried a little bit of this when I was still in I don't know undergrad or grad school um, but I don't think I could ever successfully write the, um, the dialogical philosophical exposition. I don't remember who said it, that every philosopher has to find their own style and nobody else. So like Plato wrote the book literally. <laughs> Mine is Susie and Rhyme. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, you can find Susie and Rhyme philosophy poems on the blog. Yeah. You've spoken about this before. Yeah. Uh, okay. there's a two parter on quantum mechanics. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think I could write a piece of philosophical work as a dialogue. I mean, I could... I, the best I could do is have a conversation with somebody, capture that, and then uh, write it out. But like I, a transcript? I could, basically, I could, <laughs> I could write a transcript of a conversation that I have, but I don't think I could ever write Ryan's Republic. Okay, because what I was imagining was... 
I mean, yeah, it was, I was. I always think of the 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 like the Socratic dialogues, like the Mino and mm-hmm. the Euthyphro, and just this like modern rendition of those as something like West Side Story. Like, oh, here comes the Sophists. Like, what, what's, you. what are you? What are you? What are you? What are you dressed in there, Socrates? He's like, I'm the ideal of justice right now. You don't look anything like the ideal of justice. Well, cite your source. Yeah, I'm getting there. Cite your source. I know what you're doing. Yes. No, it was a, the great. Uh, it, was a, it was a great riff from uh, Existential Comics. Uh, Andrew um, is playfully clueless right now. So like, we'll you seem philosophers... to know a lot about the ideal of justice. <laughs> Off camera, we were talking about the fact that you don't need to be a good artist to have decent comics. That is an example where he's not. I think it's a he. But the person's not particularly a, a good artist. The comics are hilarious. But the if, comics are good if you have a background in like analytic and continental philosophy. If yeah. you don't, there is a didn't get the joke button. Yeah. Uh, which I, I occasionally have to click. I, well, I would be clicking that like a madman. I always click it just to get the the exposition because sometimes he puts some gems in there in terms of like like how he interprets Socrates or something <laughs> like that. I was like, wow, I never thought about it that way, but it totally makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, um, existential comics, unofficial comic sponsor of the podcast, not a sponsor <laughs> at all, not even aware of our existence, probably not. <laughs> oh. So that that's probably the the novel I could not write. Cool. Um. Mine is the Fountainhead. I thought about it. Um, Ayn Rand barely wrote that book. <laughs> no, yeah, but it's, it's that kind of book the the modern novel that is just sort of like, like whether it's Ayn Rand, you know, like like the Fountainhead or Atlas Shrugged are like the extreme example of like the modern objectivist novel. But even stuff like um, Fielding. Or which is obviously not modern at all, <laughs> uh, or Henry James, or, or or contemporary stuff like you know John Green's work, or you know, Maureen Johnson, like a novel that is just about people doing stuff, and it is a and, and I mean it's about vastly more than that. It's about you know if you read if you read something like uh, The Fault in Our Stars or you know, you've you've got all these interactions of really really intense feelings of grief and pain and existentialism and uh, sort of teenage romance and awkwardness and like there's all these things that are interacting, but they're they're feelings. I mean, in the same and I, I to compare. Uh, the Fault in Our Stars to Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the first time that's ever been done. I will. I will have to. Uh, I'll, I'll tweet John Green and, and let him know what I did. But <laughs> he appreciated At- Atlas Shrugged is in a sense the same. Um, in, in that sense, the same kind of thing. Like it is. A, it is about uh, feeling an objective and yes, people but- have needs and goals and they, but they are entirely sort of. I don't want to use the word pedestrian, but they are entirely sort of contemporary. And, and it does it with four thousand times the number of words. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, did too. <laughs> it's, I, I, I'm certainly not going to make the argument that Atlas Drug is a good book, but it is. It is one of those things where that is not how my world works. Like that is not how I understand the world. And so I don't think I could ever write like that. Like I need symbols. It's gotta be, it's gotta be myth. Even if it's not really mythological, it has to be mythological for me to make sense of it. So, I couldn't write something that wasn't interpreted in that way. And and but as soon as you start introducing those symbols, as soon as you start introducing sort of mythological ideas, it stops being about those feelings. It starts being about myth, and you look at the the Iliad, mm-hmm. which is the story of the anger of Achilles. And you know, the very first line now is the tale of the arms and the man, and it's it just un you know, and and Achilles is definitely the main character of the of the Iliad, but it's also once you start introducing characters like Achilles himself is a mythological character, and he represents a lot of things. He represents invulnerability and vulnerability at the same time 
You know, he's he's the epitome of the hero with the fatal flaw. So there's their own, and he's also a super prima donna and all kinds of other things. But it's it's that notion that what I see when I read the Iliad is those pieces moving around. I don't see. I I understand that Achilles is angry, but I understand that Achilles is angry sort of because of his nature. Um, and he couldn't be otherwise. And Achilles isn't a person, he's larger than life. He's a myth. In the same way that um, Hawkmaster is a myth, or Kaylee Bearfighter is a myth, which is a story for another time. <laughs> but, and it's, so I couldn't, I just couldn't write a story that was just about people. Because I have no idea how that would work. I like reading them. That's like the opposite of me. Yes. Really, right? like I can only write about people. Mm-hmm. And I usually try to go to an extreme with it. No, like all of that stuff is super opaque to me. Like it has taken me a very long time to make the little sense of it that I can. It's fair. I, um, I have to change my answer. I just realized when you were talking. No. You know what I couldn't write? No, right, no. Huck's always got two answers to the ice cream. <laughs> and you know what? It's tra- you know tradition. What? You're, you are going to laugh. I could not write the Communist Manifesto or any manifesto because I cannot write about one thing without a series of footnotes of like, well... There's also this, or maybe this, or here's this other interpretation. That's not a novel. That's not a novel. It's not a novel. About it. But I could never write a manifesto because I can't commit to like one. Huck's one manifesto ad. is just like two pages of stuff and 500 footnotes. Yeah, it, it, it would it'd be <laughs> the Huck Master Festo, the Yanis Complex. <laughs> you just, I, I got two minds of everything. <laughs> That's funny. So this, yeah, I. You know, I, he's always got two answers. How do you stay practice. focused? Why do you think I've never written anything before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, I mean, but that, that is that is the big question. Is, is is, I mean, you're you're halfway through NaNoWriMo. You know, it's it's November fifteenth. You're behind on your word count because you're behind on your word count. And, but you keep. I mean, the more like the, the like the fact of the matter is that the more that you write, the more you want to write. Like the, the more ideas, like like the more ideas you'll start having. How do you stay focused? How do you? How do you just like? All right, so I know that it's chapter fifteen, and this is a police procedural novel. But what if a portal opens up and a cyborg from the future comes out? He's got a really really high tech ultraviolet flashlight. <laughs> what if? What if? What if? So, what if our, our CSI examiner was a wizard? <laughs> For me, that would call into question all the evidence. Um, Not future cyborg. Future cyborg <laughs> would be completely within the continuity because it all, none of it hasn't happened yet. Future cyborg operates by laws of physics. That so this is a really good example of a rabbit <laughs> hole you don't want to go down when you're writing during NaNoWriMo. Um so there's I, there's two things, right? There's short-term focus, and then there's long-term focus. So you have yeah. to acknowledge that um, you're in a 30-day marathon, and it comes in phases, right? So there's the honeymoon, which is like your first seven or eight days, where you're just like humming along, like, it's, yay, I'm writing a novel, and you're doing fine, and you're not like, you don't have this haggard look yet, and the bags under your eyes are only this big and not this big. Oh, shit, it's audio. I'm making little and big mo- things. With me. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> so you have to acknowledge that th- th- then there's the, like, day 10 is the killer for me. Because that's the point yeah. where you realize you're either on track or you're horribly not on track. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I break it up into short-term focus and long-term focus. And the short-term focus is, the, what do I have to do right now? To get my words out. I find this really intriguing because you are a professional project manager. I am. (laughs) I do this for a living. Yeah. So I break it down. Um, Like any problem has to have a step one. 
And step one is 1,667 words or better on day one. So what do I have to do to make that happen? Because without it, you got nothing. Um, so to stay focused in, in a short-term moment situation, I use things called sprints, mm -hmm. which is a, for those who don't know, a writing sprint is a fixed amount of time in which you just immerse yourself in that writing and crank out as much as you can without stopping. And then at the end of that fixed amount of time, you count up your words. And you usually do this as a friendly competition with others. And you'll all collect on Twitter or in a Facebook group or wherever. Um, and you'll say, okay, at the top of the hour, we're going to sprint. And you kind of do whatever you have to do to get prepared. And then for 30 minutes, I find is good because an attention span of most humans is probably 20 minutes. But So 30 yeah. minutes is a good amount of time to crank out stuff. And day one, my first word sprint, I'll probably do 500 words, 450 or 500. And as mentioned in the last episode, I guess, I will, or maybe it's the beginning of this one, I don't know. Um, <laughs> That's it's all a blur. <laughs> uh, by the end of the NaNoWriMo, I'll be doing 750 words. Um, I've done 1,000 before, but that was a particularly awesome half hour. Because um, you'll get better at it. So the immediate... Give me 30 minutes, just focus on that for 30 minutes. And then you take 30 minutes off and do whatever the hell you want to do for 30 minutes. Yeah. And then do it again. And then do it again. And if you string three of those together and you can squeeze out 600 words each time, you beat, your, you beat yeah. your word count for the day. So for me, the staying focus is a lot easier on day 10. If every day up leading up to it, I squeeze 200 more words out than I'm supposed to, and I've got myself a buffer. Yeah. So I can have a shitty day. And it doesn't matter. And part of staying focused is knowing you're going to have a shitty day. Yeah. And planning for it. If your shitty day is day one, you're fucked. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can recover, but I've been in the hole before, and it's terrible. Um, so I, yeah, my focus technique is break it up, acknowledge that it's a marathon, and then just work my way backwards to day one and figure out what I have to do right then to make it happen. And then once you've done step one, I can rest easy knowing that tomorrow is just another step one. Yeah, so it's sort of like an eat the elephant one bite at a time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but you have to <clears throat> give yourself that dedicated amount of time you'll find that like you'll do a word sprint they're great because you'll you're you're motivated you're motivated by your own failure in what sense i need 1667 words today i just wrote for 30 minutes and i only got 426 you fuck mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're like i can do better mm -hmm. like i can do better than that so yeah. you take a break for half an hour and you get mm -hmm. back down to it and then you write more than 426 so it might take you on the first day four sprints two hours yeah. out of your day and you're just you're basically shaving time out of your sprints at that point and putting more words in it and also but, but at the same time if you're over by 100 words or something every day then you're also looking after your future self who is likely haggard and needs it yeah future self will love you if you can get ahead which is why Nanos for me have always gone better when they started on a weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, set yourself up for success. If I can get by day, the start of day three. So after two full days of writing, if if I can get four thousand words out, which is only a few hundred more than what the plan is, mm -hmm. like six hundred and fifty or seven hundred more than what the plan is. Um. I feel good. Like I can go into day three feeling really good about it. Um, but getting ahead during the week is difficult. Yeah. People with other things. Families and commitments and yeah. responsibilities. Whether it's people with families who have to do stuff or people with podcasts that they have to edit. Yeah. I think the only thing I would add to the staying focused is what helped me on the thesis. Piggybacking on your idea, which is not something you could maybe do with the novel. Um, but ha having a, a f even a hazy idea of what the end is, that really helps. With the thesis, 
when I first started writing, I drifted around so much because like I had a general sense of I want to talk about first aid and ethics, but I didn't have anything that I was aiming towards. And I certainly didn't have an argument that I knew I wanted to argue. So it, I spent so much time in this limbo where I just could not, I could not bring myself to write because I didn't, it was just so, so dark. Just didn't know anything or where I was going with it. So I don't know if that's necessarily applicable in the novel, like unless you plot it out, or at least if you have the climax in mind of where you want the characters to end up, so that when you set it up, you know approximately how to get there. But I find for me, the focus really comes from knowing what the end game is or what the, the last phase is supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. I always have an option for my ending. Oh, yeah? So if you think of it in terms of dramatic need, at the end of the story, you're you're protagonist is either going to achieve their dramatic need mm-hmm. or not. Yeah. Um, and I write with that intent of really sometimes one of my novels not even knowing which path was going to be there, but knowing that one of those two things was going to happen at the yeah, end. Yeah, either they're, either they're going to get there or they're not. Yeah, so I've got a cat and mouse one that I'm mm-hmm. kind of writing and so at the end, they're either going to catch them or they're not. Um, and everything is leading toward that. So, yeah, to what you're saying, I totally agree. You have to have some idea, I think, of I just an the ending. notion of a cat and mouse novel. I wonder about the notion of a moose and squirrel novel. <laughs> Would we call it Rocky and Bullwinkle? Mm-hmm. I just wonder what the... What <laughs> Are the Russians involved? Probably. What's her name? <laughs> Nadia? Nadia? Half Natasha? of it. Natasha? Natasha? Uh, Boris and Natasha. Show no- Is this your first ever show notes with Rocky and Bullwinkle in it? I think so. Yeah. I think but so. Uh, I, I feel first. like every John Le Carré book is really just a, a moose and squirrel story. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll put John Le Carré in the, in the show notes too. So when I was working on my thesis, uh, my thing, I was, I was sort of infamous for late at night. My, my thesis shift was seven to midnight. Uh, I would wander the halls and mutter and yell because there's no one else in the building except for the custodians. Um, and I would yell at my laptop because I wouldn't s- put my fingers on the keyboard unless I knew what I was going to say. The caveat for that was what I was going to say could have been garbage. But I needed to have, I'm like, this is, you know, what is the next move in my argument? I need to have something. And I could, I, like, once I had that, I, I'd write it out and I'd look at it and be like, this is crap. This needs, you know, I can shave these three paragraphs down into one sentence. And so I would cut it. But it's like, you know, that thing I need, it was, it was what is the next thing that needs to happen? Um, to to get to the point because I already I, I had a point when I when I went it on like this is the point I am trying to make and sometimes that point would change by the end of the paper I certainly had papers where I started out with a position and by the end of the paper and doing all the research for it had completely reversed my position nice well that's good it shows an open mind well but at the at the very least. It, it, it it shows that I came into it with the wrong thinking. Hmm. Um, I constantly have to remind myself that it's fiction. The stuff I You're write... You're not actually killing people, is right? It's fiction. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. Um, and that gives me so much freedom. I can just make shit up. When in doubt... dragons. Or, or I have a hard time make, making up dragons. Or CSI but, agents from the future with high tech. Yeah, don't get me started on time travel. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dr. Time travel, people. Time travel was uh, an October episode. Oh, okay. We talked to our past selves. Yeah, wonderful. And I punched them in the face. Um, and yeah, so dog poop. At the end of it all, just make something up. NaNoWriMo is not for editing. It's not for critiquing. It's not for giving a shit. If you're doing NaNoWriMo, you don't care how eloquent you are if you've turned that phrase just perfectly or if that character has actually got that hair color. Um, You're worried about barfing all of this onto a page so that later you can look at it and go, hey, some of this doesn't suck. Look, it's a whole olive. I'm going to keep that. Mm -hmm. And that was gross. Um, Yeah, that's... that's, (laughs) Wow. 
That is easily the fourth most disgusting thing that's ever been said on this podcast. Anyway, the worst part is, is I like vaguely heard what was going on, but I was imagining what National December Editing Month, like, na- Nadino, Nadino. <laughs> National. Na- <laughs> don't don't edit in, de- in December. You have a writing hangover. Don't edit in December. <laughs> also, I mean, you've got a whole bunch of other stuff to deal with. You got Christmas and Hanukkah, and you know, the Wally, Kwanzaa. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Celebrate them all if you yeah. want. So, so I don't recommend um, editing in December, January. Well, yeah. at any rate, make a new year's resolution. Yeah, um, yeah, but I find it's a November's a lonely month for writers. Yeah, even with uh, all the community that you have online, like you guys have t- talked about how you're in writers groups and you'll have sprints yeah. and stuff like that. Like the the thing about it is, I, I liken it to being totally alone but being totally not alone at the exact same time. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, you're the only person who's going to put the words down on the page. Mm-hmm. No one else can do that for you. You can hire a ghostwriter. You uh, Pay your son for... Uh, t- oh, my God. It takes him forever to write because he's only nine. He does not pay do your daughter. it properly yet. If you see, oh, you can no. get a ghostwriter <laughs> to ghostwrite for you. That would be terrifying. Yeah, so you're... It's a, it's a solitary then thing. Was visited upon the guilty. The end. Like you're not having a conversation and jotting words down in between, right? It's not an interactive thing. It's yeah. you and that stupid laptop with that blinking cursor that just taunts you whenever you're stuck, and you just have to do it. Um, no one else can do it. No one else has your idea um, to blarg out onto that page. So it's. It's just you and your thoughts, and that's a very lonely place to be, um, especially if you're stuck or if you have other stuff going on in your life that mm-hmm. you that steals your focus. Um, but at the same time, you've got all these people around you to help, and if you just seek them out, and it must be remarkably difficult for people with social anxiety or... Uh, other such conditions that make it difficult for them to interact with other people. I don't know. I don't. I couldn't do it if I. I couldn't write if I didn't have that interaction. Mm-hmm. So if that's hard for you, um, find some other way to not be alone. I don't know how. Hug a body pillow. Something right. Um, because that that community that's out there is so supportive. Because um, everyone's doing the exact same thing. Everyone is sitting there for a portion staring of their day cursor. staring at that cursor. And all you have to do is put your hand up and go, someone see that cursor the other day? Like, it looked angry. And, that, <laughs> and, and they'll go, yes! <laughs> yes! I know of the angry cursor! And, um, it's, it's, it's kind of this weird mythical universe to be living in for 30 days. <laughs> I'm reminded... So I I have never done NaNoWriMo, but I have done uh, Vita for the past three years, which is vlog every day in April. Yes, I've heard of this thing. I'm thinking of doing it. It's really fun. I definitely recommend it. There's also vlog every day in August. Yeah. uh, Which I haven't done. And there's a blog Um, one, too, like an A to Z blog one or something. There's a bunch of different A to to Z blog ones. I've I've attempted a couple of those um, on one of my older blogs, but... uh, you can Vita. tell I work with Americans because I said Z and you said Z. <laughs> I always, I always, whenever I'm, I'm training Americans, I'm always like, oh, well, this is organized A to Z. Z because we're in Canada. <laughs> they always get a chuckle out of it, so I'm happy. But there's, uh, yeah, there, there's this, like, a vlog video. I mean, that's like, that's two hours. That's have an idea, write something down. Set up all your gear, because for mm. me, I do a lot of it in front of the lights, in front of the camera, etc. Um, I don't. I try not to do a lot where I'm just out holding a camera every once in a while. Uh, I've definitely done a bunch of those where I'm out and about with it, but even then, I'm like tripod and something. Record it. Make sure it's good. So probably record it a couple of times. Go home. Edit. Which is time-consuming. It's the reason I don't have a book for sale right now because of editing. Because you have to edit. Because it sucks. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't actually have to. I guess you could do. You no, could do I've, one. I have. I am the one day wonder on. I've got what thirty seven as of filming vlogs up since since I started. I know Whoa. it's not. It's not a lot. 
but all of them are one take. Yep. And as soon as like uh, I'm done, okay, I, I make sure it looked good. All right, uh, title. All right, yeah. upload. For me, it's like editing, editing do a nano. post processing. <laughs> uh, you know, and then and, you know, after effects and everything like that, and then I upload it. And it's usually like two in the morning. I like books. Yeah, and then that's the thing is 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 there's part of me is like NaNoWriMo seems a lot easier in terms of like workload, but a lot harder in terms of creatively taxing because mm-hmm. you know you're not sitting there like you know I'm not playing XCOM and editing it in my in my on my other computer simultaneously on another keyboard. I'm writing the whole time and it it consumes a lot more focus and. One of the things you, that, I, that I don't have to do for Vita is keep a continuous narrative going the whole time, although that would be really fun. You have to do it now. I'm, I'll think about doing it. I'll think about it. You have to. We might, no, we, we might tell one story over Vita, um, but we, I, I might, I don't know, maybe we'll, 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 we'll try something, but it's a neat idea. But yeah, this is, I mean, it's like that. But at the the difference is, at the end of Vita, I have 30 videos. At the end of NaNoWriMo, you have a novel, draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the... Like, the keyword is draft. The three that I've done successfully, um, two of them were not completed stories, but they mm-hmm. were novel-length, continuous narrative. Yeah. Um, that needed an ending. Um... I guess that's the key notion too. Is is that what you are working on in, in NaNoWriMo isn't so much a completed novel. Like there's this notion that like, oh, I finished NaNoWriMo. Now what? Now I just mail it off to uh, <laughs> every publisher I can think of. Every publisher I found in the phone book. This archaic <laughs> paper device that I was resting my typewriter. Oh, no, you'd have to query first for an agent because most publishers won't talk to you no, unless no, you have one. I'm just looking at it. I was like. Man, somebody had a shitty NaNoWriMo if they wrote this in the phone book. <laughs> well, you know what's you know what's curious, and I have yet to hear the podcast for it. But uh, Andy Weir. Now, did he do it as Nano, or did he start it as a serial? Ah, fuck! He might have started it as a serial and not a Nano. Um, but The Martian. Oh yes. Started out as just a thing that. Yep. Kind of cobbled together. Oh, and that's and that's, um, and that's how a lot of things start. It's mm. Lots of mo- most great things don't go eureka. They go, huh? That's funny. Okay. Well, my two years ago nano project, I um, wrote this book about a serial killer. I'm and shocked. I got what's that? I'm shocked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got fifty thousand words out, and I and I knew where it was going, and I knew where the ending was. I just ran out of November. And never finished it. And I was like, huh. And I shelved it. So, I don't know, it didn't excite me anymore. And then, like, I don't know, a few months ago, I got accepted to write for this um, literary website. Mm -hmm. And What is the literary website, Andrew, whoever you are? The website is haphazardcoffee.com. You can find it in the show notes. The website is the uh, uh, Organic Coffee Haphazardly literary website um and they needed uh after i was accepted to write for them i was asked if i could do a serial novel and i was like so you did a serial novel about a serial killer yes and i dusted off that old nano thing and i was like hmm. i put three paragraphs together to summarize it sent it off to the editor and she emailed me back when can i have the first one i was like well, I'll write that. <laughs> so now I've got a serial novel that that I will finish in November. Neat. Which is kind of cool. So it's funny how things like that happen. Um, you'd think you'd think there was a failure in there, but there almost never is. When even if you fail, like even if you hit you know twenty thousand words or thirty thousand words or one thousand words. You are farther than you were when you started. My biggest regret. So I have been I have been part of this online writing group for what like four or five years now. I don't know if it's been that long, but it's, it's been, been a while. while. It's been a while, and I, and every November, um, I've always got a ton of stuff going on in November, and you know I'm always sort of I, I am the king of making excuses not to write. 
I'm probably not the king of it, but I'm pretty good at it. I'm like the duke. Yeah. <laughs> I am I am I'm further up in the aristocracy than I would like to be. And but I will watch people doing sprints and you know, I they like creating stuff and I'll always be like Well, it's it's November third. I should have started three days ago, and and, and the day before November first, uh, which is conveniently also Halloween. Uh, my Halloween plan is much the same way. I don't have one. I forget it's Halloween until Halloween, at which point I'm like, oh. <laughs> but November first, I'm like, oh well, I could, but I I really should have had a plan. And I, and I see people and I always, you know, then they're, they're doing sprints and they're riding and at the end and some of them, some of them make it to 50,000 and some of them don't, but all of them are happy because they've made this thing that didn't exist before. And I'm always like, I wish I could have done that. And I could have done that. And I'm like, I could have done that, but I didn't. And even if I had written 10 words, I would be infinitely farther along than if I had written nothing. Even if I had joined in for one sprint. And I used to. Uh, when we, when, when, I, when we, I first joined, uh, when everyone else was sprinting, I would sprint on blog posts. And mm. I'd write blog posts. Because that was my big thing in November. Was I, was I still try and do a lot more writing. I've got writing I've got to do for d and I've got blog posts I have to write. I've got books I've got to review. Like I have a lot of writing to do. And I have a lot of writing I want to do. It's not a novel, but it is writing. And I can be like, I also wrote yeah. 1,200 words in this thing that's going to be online next week. It's a really good feeling to have just created something. That's, I mean, that's, that's why we're doing this. That's why I have kids, actually. <laughs> that's, that's really weird. That's you, really you weird. You create humans. <laughs> and all I had to really do was lie there for a minute. Um <laughs> Edit that out. Um, <laughs> We're not editing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, so there's there's no such thing as failing, but you have to accept that there is no failure. I would like, say that you, there's no such thing as be, failing once you've started. Yeah, the only real failure is, is it's Yoda, right? Like, do or do not. There is no try or whatever the fuck the actual You totally try. Is. Um, it's the, the trying is the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> you... Try. Doing not do, is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I failed my first nano. I, it was twenty, about fifteen or twenty thousand words, and I hit November twelfth, and life happened, mm-hmm. and I never got it back. I was just making my number, and then two days went by, and three days went by, it was zero, 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 and it died, and. It was so disappointing. I failed my first Vita. Um, 25 videos, I think. The second year, it was 29. It's close. This year, 30. Ta-da. Like, this year is the year that I made it. But And it was just like... Last year, it was it was just one night when I was, I was too busy with something else. And I didn't... You know, by the time I wrapped it up, it was 10.30 and I would have had to record a video and edit it, and I had to get up for work in the morning. And Didn't that also happen around the time your furnace blew up last year? No, that was this year. That was the... the oh, okay. Yeah, there, there was a night after we finished recording a podcast when my furnace exploded. So instead of uploading and editing the video I had prepared, I shot a video about how my furnace had just exploded, uh, and I had no power. Oh, okay, because I, th- I was confusing that with the time your computer died. <laughs> that was last week. Okay. Time just doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't. In the right portal. It doesn't. So that first year I failed, 20,000 words. What's really interesting about that is I had 20,000 words. Mm-hmm. Yay. Next year when I went to do NaNoWriMo, I was determined to win, as they call it. That became 20,000 words of a totally different book, a part two to a book, except for one chapter. And I took that one chapter and I plunked it down on my page on October 31st and I went, I'm finishing book one. And it became, that the next year became 50,000 words 
of an entirely different novel that was the prequel to the one that I failed writing the year before. This is a complex uh, continuity. So, it's true. So it just becomes uh, you're like the George banner. Lucas of Nano <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot like golf. Right? Certainly, it's really Lucas not about all the podcast. shots you make; it's about the shots you miss. Yeah. And can you miss well? Yeah. And by putting anything down on the page, you've given yourself an opportunity to not just succeed, but to miss well. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, I think, a lot of life in in there as well. I, I spend I spend a whole day of golf. My my only day of golf, missing learning to miss well. It, eventually, you learn to just drink. <laughs> That's what I find. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Whether it. you're failing at golf or failing at writing. <laughs> I was going to say, that, 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 that seems like a NaNoWriMo rule. There's a lot of uh, of drink recipes and, and uh, wines, uh, right, wine recommendations shared about at that time. <laughs> yes, there is definitely a lot of that, for sure. But fa- uh, failure... Failure is not an option, sort of, because failure is not a possibility. Once you have started, yeah, then you, you have succeeded. Yeah. You have, you have succeeded in going farther than you have ever gone. And it's, it's kind new. of neat. I mean, that's as true, I guess, with NaNoWriMo as it is with, like, running the Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can... Like, I'm going to tie in the Martian again. There's a... Not so much a spoiler, but that one point he says, this is the first time anyone's ever been here. And he goes through this episode where he just acknowledges that no one's ever done that before. So every word you put on the page is it's new, right? It's that is brand new. No one's new. ever taken a poop on Mars before. <laughs> I think he might have even said that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, em- embrace the failure. I don't even, it's not even failure. I just learned redefine success. Yeah. yeah. Move the goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> learn, yeah. learn from your mistakes and do better next time. Get one yeah. step further. I don't know. That's how I used to learn how to run. Oh no, because fail, uh, fail fast, fail often, sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I was running, um, it would just I I the next time I ran, I tried to run a little bit further than the last time I stopped mm-hmm. to walk, and eventually I just stopped walking on Ring Road. I, I was able to run the entire distance of Ring Road without stopping. So it's, I guess it's yeah. like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, that kind of advice doesn't tell you how to run, much in the same way failing doesn't tell you how to write, or it's not going to tell you what to write, but at least it gives you some guidance. To, yeah, but, to I mean, on. again, the, the goal of NaNoWriMo isn't so much write well as it is write more. Mm-hmm. Like, writing, good writing doesn't happen in a first draft. Mm-hmm. Not even if you're a super genius. Good writing comes from editing. Mm-hmm. Anyone yeah. who tells you differently is a liar. Yeah, writing a novel isn't writing a novel, it's rewriting a novel. Mm-hmm. Many times. So November is about getting that first thing. You cannot edit a blank page. Yeah, it's, that's I, I, I used to tutor. Is that Vonnegut? Maybe I mm-hmm. think so. I used to I, I used to tutor a kid in uh, English, and that was my my big message to him was just you you can edit bad, you can't edit nothing. Uh, or as uh, as Shannon used to put it. Uh, we'll link Shannon in the show notes. You can. She was uh, our professor in university, and she's awesome. You can find her on Twitter down there yeah, in the show notes. But uh, was the the thing that took me through grad school was perfect is the enemy of done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that I, is I can so spend true. so much time wanting it to be perfect, but what it needs to be is done. Speaking of done, I think it's time to close it there for the night. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. Still Andrew. We're signing off. Keep writing. And I have a a piece of advice that will serve you very well. Do not trouble yourself with it at all. And thus, when I see people and I find myself troubling myself with their choices or their options when they are none of my concern, I think of that advice And it was good advice for Gwendolyn, and it is good advice for me, because it is frankly none of my goddamn business to police other people's choices. Don't skip leg day.